misschien om aan het kruid. Alright, so this is waterdicht or waterproof. And uh, well, it's not actually totally waterproof, but uh, we tried, tried our best uh, to make an installation uh, where you can interact with water, and by interacting with the water, you can interact with the sound. So uh, that's basically the whole uh, idea. So what, what do you want me to say about the installation? How does it work? Okay. Well, maybe if you can come a little bit closer with the camera. It, it's safe now. The water stopped almost. You can see this, these little things. And actually those, are, do you see them? These black uh, things? Like this one and this one. Yeah. Well, those are actually uh, plastic cups, beer cups. And underneath them there are piezo elements. So the piezo elements uh, function as sensors. So they, uh, oh. So actually they uh, sense if uh, some if something is coming in, if a signal is coming in or not, and if it's not, it um, triggers the sound we prepared in the, in the software. And if there no, actually it's the other way around, right? Yeah. So if there is no interaction, or if there is interaction, you disrupt the flow of signal, the signal flow, and by that uh, you trigger a sound. I hope that's a little bit clear, more clear. <laughs> no, not really? All right, all right, all right. So uh, there's continually... Uh, how, how can I say this the best way? Well, because the water gets on the sensors, there's all the time an impulse getting in. And by interrupting uh, the flow of that impulse getting in, uh, the software knows it because there the signal stops. And then we, uh, when the signal stops, a sound gets triggered. So that's actually how it works. So usually when you press a button, uh, you trigger a sound, but we do the opposite thing. By not pressing the button, you trigger the sound. So that's about it. I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it needs to be continuously, um, there needs to be water streaming continuously, or else uh, all the sounds go on, because if you interrupt a stream, you get a sound. So, um, we wanted actually to have like an engine that could stream the water automatically, but uh, it was way too expensive for us, so now we have to do it by hand. Um, yeah. Uh, a water pump? A water pump. Well, uh, uh, yeah, it sounds expensive, I mean. Mm, okay, but how much would something like that cost? I mean. Mm. I mean, this was really low budget. I mean, how much did we spend? Like uh, 50 euros per a person, you know? And we didn't want to go above 50 euros a person, so. So you're the manual water pump? Yeah, <laughs> the human water pump. The sounds have been programmed in the software, and I basically trigger the synthesized sounds by disrupting the flow of water. So, yeah. By cups and hands. By cups or hands. 
I mean, if you if you use hands, you have like the streams of water go. So it still um, hits the sensors. The, so cups are like better for disrupting the flow completely. So yeah. So you can use all kinds of tools. Like yeah, you can be creative, I guess. <laughs> Well, this is Unvorzoom. That's uh, an installation uh, based on an electronic soundscape, and uh, we made an we made it interactive because of uh, we want to um, invite the public to uh, to discover the soundscape. And um, there are three characters in the installation that are uh, planets and stars. And uh, we have sonified them, and they react uh, to the to the people in the installation. And um, when a lot of people are interacting with the installation, uh, the energy is going very high. The sound is going to be loud, and you feel uh, that that there is a lot of energy in the room. And when there's nobody, it's going to be silent. And we want to uh, attract people to discover the soundscape. That's the idea of the of the installation.
thing that I am aware of that uh, we have uh, a joint presentation here in Stein of uh, Hagen Institute students and also from a recent presentation also from uh, Dimo Schwarz, somewhere here, who's doing a workshop <laughs> here. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> uh, who's doing a workshop here uh, this uh, week. Um, what you are looking at is a presentation of a, a blog we do at uh, the HKU, and it's called Klankontwerp. If I translate that, I, you get sound design. But and everybody knows what sound design is, and Klankontwerp is something different than sound design. So what is uh, Klankontwerp? It's like uh, everything you do in the design of sound for more theater or stage, uh, dance maybe. Um, and also it involves uh, a lot of things, for example, with uh, main systems or hardware for these uh, same environments. And this particular block is about making hardware and also making a performance with the hardware for, uh, for a stage or as an installation. So there's two installations actually that you can look at or you've seen or the one uh, at the bar, but there's another one hidden somewhere there. And um, <laughs> um, this is a hot pot lamp from Stein and mostly means that we are not only performing but we also explain a little bit about what the idea behind the different performances and also the installation. So I, they just played so I asked the first students, Thijs, uh, Erik and Roald to explain what they did because if you, they start in the dark you talk maybe the just normal guitars but they're happened something with these uh, guitars and maybe they can explain what happened. Yes, welcome. Uh, we are the Void Pointers. Um, we actually started this as a band uh, about, I don't know, half a year ago. Yeah. At one of these uh, uh, KO blocks, um, we had to also perform and they asked us, uh, uh, what, what, do you have a band name? We thought, well, we just made something up, so that's what we became the voice pointers. And what we do is we take a musical instrument and we just take it completely sideways and do something different with it. And uh, for this this uh, uh, this time around, we, we used the guitar as an inspiration source and just went with it. Uh, I'll first tell something about mine, then you can explain it. Um, I took light uh, as my uh, inspiration source. So I have these um, LEDs right here, and this unit, which uh, basically is a, a couple of um, uh, wooden uh, uh, walls that, that make sure that the, the light of one LED uh, goes straight to a uh, light sensor right here. And uh, well, this is to make sure that the light doesn't leak. But it still gives me the, the possibility of uh, pushing inwards and blocking the light. And, and so uh, I have a sort of range of values uh, coming out of it. Um, similar thing happens here. This is a, a knight cut. It's a, a simple sort of pocket light which you can uh, yeah, make light with. Uh, also have a light sensor right here. All goes to an Arduino, which is a, a sort of uh, do-it-yourself chipboard where you can plug in sensors and uh, um, read data out of them. Um, this is just a regular uh, MIDI controller, which I also use uh, to uh, manipulate the speed with which these things uh, blink. So downwards is super fast. And um, uh, this is really slow. Um, yeah, both of these just uh, go out through the wires to a laptop on which I'm running a, a, a patch uh, made in Superglider. Superglider is a programming language for sound. Um, we, we took an inspiration from uh, some older forms of uh, synthesis like uh, FM synthesis and far plus strong, some <coughs> vocoding. I didn't use lots, much vocoding, but they did. And uh, yeah, that's how my issue works. Uh, 
Can you tell something about this? Yeah, well, um, this used to be a normal guitar, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was kind of ripped apart because of our other project. I took a lot of stuff out of it, and then it was just a carcass. And I thought, like, um, well, maybe you can do something with it again. Um, well, what does it do? There's a lot of controllers right now. We have an infrared sensor uh, right here, uh, which controls the drums. So I have different patterns, and I can just uh, control them like that. And turn the drums on or off. And this controller, I call it the Hans controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, He sells them. And uh, <laughs> well, it's a very nice controller because you have like uh, a 3D map thing going on. So uh, I'm just still a little bit experimenting with it on this guitar. And I, I took back the the holes <laughs> and uh, to just have like a little bit more uh, tuned sound because it's a bit hard. To uh, tune in nothing. And uh, well, we have some. Um, this is of course for volume. Uh, well, uh, this one uh, I can like uh, flow through my uh, presets. So I, it's like there's like 10 presets and I can just morph around and maybe find some new sounds there. And on the computer, there's a maximum speed patch. It's very wide, and I think the idea was of the three of us that we uh, all made one patch together, like uh, with FM synthesis and uh, all the 80 stuff going on, co-colors, and then we all used the same patch, so it kind of was like an experiment. And in the back here is an Arduino where all the wires go to. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, and then of course a keyboard, which has a <laughs> very cool arpeggiator. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh, this is my instrument. <laughs> it used to be a uh, inflating guitar, but uh, it has all wires in it now. Uh, I just have a normal keyboard, which is uh, quite simple. And here, and here, and here, and here are uh, pressure control sensors. So I can push here, and I control, can control the sound uh, from my laptop. And it all goes to the same as we know, and uh, to my laptop with the same patch. Yeah. As the others. So that's my uh, guitar. <laughs> <laughs>